Thanks for tuning in to this latest video weather briefing. We'll discuss the ongoing drought in California and the ENSO monitoring that is occurring with expectations of El Nino and our current conditions and finally an outlook. This is Alex Tardy, a meteorologist here at the National Weather Service in San Diego. Many of you driving around Southern California have seen the signs. We are in a serious drought and we are promoting across Southern California to help save water because of this drought. The impacts from the drought are already evident across our region with very stressed conditions with vegetation dying, weak, and a very short green up that we saw in April. These are pictures taken in May. Other impacts were the devastating and numerous wildfires that occurred in middle of May across San Diego. Here's one here, the Cocos Fire in San Marcos, during a strong Santa Ana wind event. So how are we doing in California right now? Well, taking a look back at this past winter, the period November through April, it was the warmest period on record for the state of California, as shown here. When you look at the precipitation across California, it was not the driest on record, but it's the third driest across the state. We only averaged across the state about 10 and a half inches of rain. This is October through April. This makes it the third driest, and it's the driest since 1977. This chart here shows the average temperature in California. So this includes the high and low temperatures for the period November through April. It also shows that 2013 was the warmest on record. The temperature averaged 51.3 degrees. This is much above normal as shown below on the table. Let's look at it on a map from November through April, the record warmest. You can see a lot of regions in California, including Southwest California, where temperatures were record warm. How about for precipitation? As we showed earlier, it was very dry. Not the driest, however, but it's in the bottom 10% as shown on the right. The California precipitation compared to normal is shown on the left-hand side. You can see those dark red areas are only 30 to 40% of normal precipitation for this past winter. Here's another look at it across Southern California. It also shows precipitation percent of normal, which is basically 25 to 50 percent of normal. Here's what the average weather pattern looked like for October through April. This is an average of the upper level weather pattern or the jet stream. Dominant upper level ridge of high pressure blocked most storms for California as shown here. And then the opposite occurred where a deep trough of low pressure across the Great Lakes was in place, allowing very cold air and several cold air masses to move across the Great Lakes region into New England. Again, this is the average weather pattern, so this is very significant that this shows up this extreme throughout the whole entire winter. What about looking back all the way three years ago? This map here takes into account where it normally is dry and where it's normally wet, and then places an index. As shown here, the areas in orange and red are extremely dry, near record dry, and this is the past three years combined. So this drought really started three years ago and has elevated to exceptional levels in parts of California this past year. Here's a depiction of the drought that I'm talking about. We see extreme drought conditions across most of California, all the way down to the San Diego coast. And the highest level, exceptional drought, as shown here in South Central California. What about the stress on the fuels that we showed earlier? Well, record-breaking fuels, as shown here, even on the coast of California. The blue line is below the red line, which is the minimum observed. So we are in territory where dry fuels are at levels not seen before. This lack of precipitation can also be shown in terms of deficits. At selected locations here, you can see 
Most areas are a foot to two feet below normal in the past three years. This equates to about a season to as much as two seasons of lost precipitation. This is taking a toll on our reservoirs. As shown here across the state, the major key reservoirs are about 50% full or half full, and this is barely 60% of where they really should be this time of the year. Will there be any snow to help continue to fill them up? The current reservoirs in San Diego region and the Diamond Valley Reservoir shown here just around 70%. In San Diego County, the local storage is now below 40% of capacity. Well, the snow cover across all of California was minimal this year. Here's a depiction of the Lake Tahoe region and then up near Big Bear in February. Reservoirs at that point were at some all-time lows for the year across the region. Well, is there any snowpack in the Sierra Nevada, our major source of runoff in the springtime? The latest observations taken in mid to late May shows percent of normal snowpack is below 5%. Basically, across the Sierra Nevada, even on the higher elevations and the north-facing slopes, very little snow left. In fact, the snowpack, even back in April, was at a record clip only comparable to the dry winter of 76-77. The blue line shows here compared to the black line of the driest year. There is a little bit of good news. Precipitation that we received during the winter in mid-February through late March was quite significant and that basically added up to be the water year for California and the Sierra Nevada as shown here. Nonetheless, we're still about 50% of where we should be, even in the mountains. Is there some hope to bring precipitation to our region? The information about El Nino has been out for the past couple months, and is the El Nino already developing, and what can we expect? This is a typical weather pattern that the average El Nino would bring, and especially the strong El Ninos, a much more persistent, elongated Pacific jet stream that drives storms and brings above normal precipitation. Here's what's currently going on out in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean. We are seeing the warming starting to develop, as shown here on the right in the orange. Here's the region we monitor in the Equatorial Pacific Ocean from the Dateline all the way to South America. A large area where temperatures are now being observed as a little bit above normal. Currently, the neutral conditions persist, but the warming is expected to continue. As shown here, deep below the ocean surface, there is significant warm water that is present. So this water is expected to come up to the surface over the next couple of months. Here's a look at our statistical and dynamical forecast models. These actually can predict sea surface temperatures in the equatorial Pacific Ocean. As shown here, the average of them is expecting the warming to continue. So they are basically indicating a development of El Nino or above normal sea surface temperatures all the way through the summer and fall, and perhaps peaking out in the early winter. Another way to look at it is here. The probability of El Nino developing is up around 80%. And this will be during the peak of the winter, as shown here, October, November, December. So what does El Nino need to bring across California to really help significantly with drought relief? Well, on average, 150% of normal. So we can't just get a normal season to get out of this drought. We would need significantly more precipitation. Have El Ninos done this in the past? Well, you only have to look back a few years ago, and you can see here, 86, 87 was very dry, despite solid El Nino conditions. However, the following year, very wet, at least for Southern California. More recently, 2004, 2005 was a very wet year across Utah, Southern California, and Arizona in that El Nino. A similar El Nino in strength occurred in 2006, 2007. 
That was the start of our last significant drought. You can see precipitation was much below normal. Most of the precipitation shifted up into the Pacific Northwest. Why do we label El Nino as wet then? Well, across the country, and on average when you include all El Ninos, there is a pretty good signal across the lower 48 from Southern California through Texas and Florida and up into Georgia and South Carolina. However, when you do remove some of those big El Ninos like 82, 83, 97, 98, well, you start developing a much drier signature. This is the rainfall through the entire winter months as shown here, October through April for all the El Nino years. What's the outlook then based on what we see observing the Pacific Ocean right now and the sea surface temperatures and the expected development of El Nino? Well, for the summer, July through September, we expect the warm weather we saw this winter and spring to continue into the summer. That could spell some significant heat waves. We do also expect a significant monsoon season as shown here in green. That would bring wetter than normal conditions across the Four Corners region or the Great Basin region. That could even clip parts of Southern California with some significant monsoon activity for our mountains and deserts. How about looking a little bit further October through December? Well, there is indications based on past El Ninos and current observations that there's growing confidence that we will get the El Nino and also that that El Nino will bring above normal precipitation. You can see it's quite cautious though, only 40% chance of above normal precipitation for far Southern California. And then it tapers off pretty quickly when you get into Northern California, the real core source region for storage of water. Thanks for tuning in to this weather briefing from the National Weather Service, update on the latest drought, climate conditions, and an outlook of Enso El Nino into the fall and winter months. Here's some links you'll find useful. You can monitor all weather stations at the link above, all weather stations, monitoring rainfall during the monsoon season or for next winter as shown here. You can also get information of departure from normal from the link in the middle. Thanks for tuning in to the National Weather Service office in San Diego.